live. All right, are we live? We are live. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our speaker series for March. Uh, we are here with Paul, and he is the director of Project Perch for South Florida. Uh, we're really excited to have him here. Uh, we treat lots of different species, as you know, but burrowing owls um, are especially important, being that they are a threatened species. Um, we actually have one in care right now. If you want to check out our social media, they're cute. Um, so we'll also be updating you when that little guy, uh, if he's able to be released. But I will now give you to Paul, and uh, hope you enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Well, hello, hello. I am Owlman Paul. I uh, retired like five years ago. I, I had a bass boat for 20 years, and... The plan was, when I retired, I'm going to fish. But in 2015, 2016, I became involved with a not-for-profit group, Project Perch, that deals with burrowing owls. And they had a big project going on at the time. They were moving the airport owls, Fort Lauderdale International Airport, which built a second run. And so the owls lost green space, and the colony there needed help. And the numbers were dropping, so the FWC had asked Broward County, the airport people, to work with us. And we were able to, with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Health and Florida Fish and Wildlife, we were able to trap the remaining owls at the airport and take them to uh, South Florida Wildlife Center. And they stayed there for a month. Owls have what's called site fidelity. If we had just moved the owls to the new location, they would just fly right back. <laughs> so they spent a month at the Wildlife Center. And Dr. Steiger, who's working here now at Belly Harbor, uh, she drew their blood so that we could sex them. You can't tell male from female just by appearance. You either have to do internal imaging or blood work can determine that. So after four weeks went by, we were able to install 10 foot pelican cages at a Davy Park. It's on Knob Hill, just north of Treetops Park, if you're ever up that way. And we put in two artificial burrows inside each 10 foot cage. And at that point in time, they were needing volunteers to feed the owls in the morning and in the evening. The evening shift was easy. easy. Everybody wanted to go in the cage and feed the owls. Nobody wanted to be up at sunrise, but I had just retired. <laughs> Can I do it? <laughs> so, so I went, they trained me, and I would be there. It's still dark, and I'd walk around the park, and I had the key, and I'd open it up. And we'd go in and get down really low, because you, you don't want to stress the owls. And I'd have live crickets and mealyworms. I'd give them fresh water, take notes on you know, each cage. It was the coolest thing. So I sold my bass boat, and I started dealing with owls. And five years later, I'm director of Burrowing Owl Conservation with Project Perch. Uh, we're 14 years old. Uh, we started as part of South Florida Audubon. Our founder, Kelly Heffernan, is an avian biologist. So she is an expert on burrowing owls. There's three people on our board now. One year ago, we left Florida Audubon and we became our own 501c3. So now we're Project Perch Inc. And we have three people on our board, myself, the avian conservation biologist, Kelly, and Dr. Brian Mealy. Dr. Brian Mealy did his thesis on the Florida burrowing owl. If you've ever seen the movie Hoot, his owls were in the movie Hoot. He designed the original artificial burrow. It's been modified, but it was his brain that hatched the artificial burrow system. Uh, he's on our board. He's teaching down in Kennedy. He's not real active with us. He had, he's on our board. If we ever come across something that we're not familiar with, it's, hey, Brian, you ever seen this? <laughs> and Brian says, yeah, they're anting. Anting? What the heck is anting? 
We saw an owl laying on the ground, ants all over the way. They're not the only bird that does it. You can look it up. I'm not an expert on anting, but it's good to have a Dr. Mealy available to you uh, just, for, just for something like that. All right, so we'll get on a little more about these guys in a bit. This is six foot or six inch sewer pipe. We buy them in 14 foot lengths at the South Florida Wildlife Center. They gave us a little area of land. That's where we have our special saws. The person who helped Kelly found Project Perch 14 years ago, Grant Campbell was an old Navy man. He used to work on ship engines and he was a construction contractor guy. So he built a saw that was long enough. You can put a 14 foot pipe on it. And it has rollers so we can roll the pipe. And at the end of the pipe, there's a saw that comes down and it cuts the pipe. So we can cut these into 40 inch segments. And we take it to another saw and it cuts the bottom out. So this is the pipe that gets the owl down to their new home. You guys have seen these before, they're in the ground, the green lid. You you move, remove the green lid, there's little shutoff valves. This is irrigation control valve box. We cut one side round and it fits on the pipe. And we drill holes in the pipe and into the valve box. We zip tie it together. We cut a hole in the back so the owls can continue to tunnel. We give them 40 inches in a box and they turn it into a 10, 12 foot long burrow. Pretty cool. Um, so when we do the install, we always put it in an area that is on high ground to avoid flooding and away from trees. And away from trees is pretty important. The hawks eat owls. And these burrowing owls, they're out during the day. A lot of times you'll see them right outside the burrow. And what they're doing during the day, you'll just see them constantly scanning back and forth, looking up, looking around for hawks. And if a hawk comes by, they're right down the burrow. So we make sure that we put this away from trees. But sometimes I see a lot of owl burrows right under a tree. I don't know why. Sometimes they'll go right underneath the tree root, which is good because the root means their burrow, that section is not collapsible because the tree root is a roof. So that works out pretty well. We cut the bottom out of this pipe for two reasons. One reason is we want the owl walking on earth instead of PVC. And the other reason is with the heavy rains, the water will percolate down into the soil before it gets to the nest. So when we put this in place, we bury this box so deep, there'll be about six inches of dirt on top. And then the pipe will be connected and it's angled up to where the top of the pipe is ground level. So all you see, once we sink this in the ground, we put the dirt all back on, we put the side back in place. All you'll see is a little opening here. In order to attract the owl, we use magic dust. We put white sand, a bed of white sand at the entrance. And owls, when they hunt at night, they're flying around. And if they see a white, will stand out against the green. And owls instinctively know that sand is easy digging. So they come to the sand, come right to the sand, and then they see a tunnel. If you're a burrowing owl and you see a tunnel, <laughs> we got you. You can't do anything but go down the tunnel. That's what burrowing owls do every time they go down the tunnel. And when they go down the tunnel, since they love to dig, they're going down, they're also kicking their legs back and moving their wings back. And I get a bunch of the dirt, the black dirt that was in the tunnel on top of my white sand. 
So I can come back the day after I do an install, and I look to see if Mal's visiting. And 90% success rate with this. Maybe not the next day, but we do have 90% success rate of owls moving into our burrows, which is very cool. Because the owls are a threatened species, when an owl when an owl digs, it will close that field in. Ask South Plantation High School, ask Westminster Academy, ask Cooper City High School, ask uh, the soccer field for uh, Coral Springs, soccer field for uh, Coral Springs, their soccer field is closed. And in order to remove the burrow, you need a special permit from Florida Fish and Wildlife. And to do the work, you need, the landowner needs to hire a registered agent. So most environmental consulting firms that are registered agents for burrowing owls charge a lot. Uh, the cheapest one that City of Hollywood could find for one burrow on a ball field, they were going to pay $8,500 between the fee to the agent and what they had to pay to the imperiled species mitigation fund was $8,500. They were not going to do any mitigation burdens. $1,900, you can write a check to the state, $1,900 and eliminate a borough and make the owl homeless. We don't do that. If they want to use us, I think we charge Hollywood. We got that $1,900 down to $600 because we installed mitigation burrows. So they paid $600 to the state. I think we charged them $350 for our materials. Yeah. So Hollywood uses this all the time. We're registered agents for Miramar, Pembroke Pines, uh, Cooper City, you name it, all the municipalities that have owls. Why wouldn't you use it? And that's what we want. You know, now we get more and more volunteers. Hi, Rachel. Rachel's our newest volunteer. <laughs> Yay. Um, I'm glad you paid it. Sorry. Sorry you uh, went down there. That's where I went, too. And they, they helped me get here. Uh, um, so as I said before, Dr. Brian Neely came up with this design. And uh, he used it when they built uh, County Park up in uh, Broward, uh, Central Regional Park, a huge park, and uh, at that time the owls were species of special concern, so he would hopscotch them around. He put some burrows not too far from where the natural burrows is, and the owls would move over there. And then the next day he was able to collapse those old burrows. He put in more burrows over here, so they would jump over there, and eventually he got them all the way around to the back side of the park where there was going to be no construction where we wanted them to be. Because if we would have just put them all the way in the back side of the park, lower percentage of the owls finding them and moving in right away. So Dr. Bailey, he's, uh, he's wonderful. This, anybody recognize this? What is this? A perch? That's what it is now. What did it used to be? A mop. A mop, a tea mop, yeah. I cut 24 inches off, right? I buy them by the case. And what this does is we put these right in front of the burrow. When I do presentations to the kids in some of the schools, but especially the little ones, I have them lay on the ground. Because these owls are nine inches tall tops, right? So if your eyes are nine inches off the ground and you're looking for ground predators coming to eat you, you can't see very far. And if you're looking for crickets or bugs or worms or lizards or something to eat, you can't see very far. So then I have the kids put their heads this tall and look around. Well, now the whole world's opened up. So Project Perch right here, what we do is we observe, protect, and nurture. One of the ways we nurture is with the use of the perch. All right. Let's talk about the guys that I brought. This bird, he's got two bands. One band is silver, that was a US band. The green band, P14, means he was one of the airport birds that was translocated 
from Fort Lauderdale International Airport. This uh, bird, he was my best friend ever since I met him with the translocation. I met him in a cage. And then we released him and he stayed. And then I would check on him almost every night. He'd hear my truck driving around this park. I'm checking on all these owls. There's 34 owl burrows in this 50 acre park now. And the offspring of the airport owls and local owls are, are there today. We have an active colony where there was no colony before. So it's a very successful translocation project. This guy would hear my truck coming. And he'd pop his head out. He'd come out and say hi to me every night. It was like clockwork. And then October 30th, he didn't come out. I thought, that's a little odd. But, you know, sometimes when the mowers come, the owls get a little freaky and you don't see them for a day or two and then they start popping back up. I thought, Maybe that was it. And I came back the next night, Halloween, and he had passed away, natural causes. He was right at the entrance to the borough. So the first thing I did, I cried. I got him on ice, and we were able to have the taxidermists do this for us so that I could share with you guys and get a really close-up look. Uh, when I have them on display, we actually have plates of glass cubes that go over this so that the wind doesn't ruffle the feathers too much. And little kids don't go, you know, touching it, but the oils of your fingers, they last longer. But I know you guys, so are great, so I didn't need to put the plexiglass. So this was a very happy ending, as good as it could get. This bird lived at Vista View Park and, uh, in Broward, off of, uh, right by I-75 and Griffin Road. We had a call, the bird had been hit by a car. So he passed away uh, early, but we were able to have him taxidermy as well so that we're able to share him and have a couple of different poses. If you look at these birds, the camouflage is just amazing. These birds are originally lived in the dry prairie lands in central Florida. And when they lived there, the background was just, just like this. And they also, these birds do 14 different vocalizations. And the coolest one, they learned while they were living in that dry prairie land, they learned to mimic a rattlesnake. So that, say a, a fox were to chase one down the burrow, and then that fox starts digging, gonna dig out that burrow. Well, this little guy will. You hear that? Yeah. That's what he sounds like. He sounds just like that. I know, I've been around the several times. And even though I know there's an owl down at Burrow, when I hear that, <laughs> I, I hesitate still. Because I don't really know. You know, I, I'm sure there is, but you don't really. So the fox takes off. Long story short. And somehow, these birds, today, they still make that noise. Nature's just incredible how they, they come up with these things. Um, 14 different vocalizations. We'll go off on a tangent for a minute and we'll come back. I'll get lost, but it's cool. Uh, one of the parks that we had uh, get a permit for, it was uh, Ballfield, Westminster Academy. There was a pair. We didn't know there was a pair. There was a burrowing owl out of Ballfield. And I went, I met with the city rep, or with the school rep. It was Westminster Academy, it's a large Christian school. And then they have this huge area where their college sports activity is. This place is, it's all fenced in. Football field, two softball fields, a baseball field, a practice baseball field, tennis, um, a big lake, uh, just, it's huge. And I wanted to be there at dusk. So they gave me a key because owls are active at dawn and dusk. They're crepuscular, not nocturnal, not diurnal. They're crepuscular, which means most active in twilight. So I wanted to be there when the sun was going down. I wanted to see if that owl had a mate. 
because when I first went, I said, yeah, there's a burrow. You closed off your field. I protected the burrow. I wanted to see if the female would come out of the, out of the nest. Because if they're, if they're incubating their eggs, you can't tell. The female only comes out for a, a few minutes in the morning and in the evening. He'll hunt for the female. They'll bring her food. She's down there sitting on eggs. So when I got there, I unlocked the lock. And I drove my truck in. I rolled the gate back. Now I'm inside this huge facility all by myself in an area I'd never been in before. And it's kind of like, all right, this is kind of weird. So then I go around, and in the baseball fields, have you guys ever been in a field where they have like ivy growing all along the back fences so you can't see out? Well, I was in a field like that. So I brought my chair, and if you're observing owls, always have binoculars. It can be a cheap pair of binoculars so you're not close to the owl, because the owl will focus on you. I don't want to see an owl that's focused on me. One thing the owl should be focused on predators and feeding, not on Paul. So if I stay back away, I can see an owl doing what an owl is supposed to do. So I'm in a chair, bring my folded chair. I'm sitting over here and I have my binoculars. But before I got to that chair, I went to look at his burrow and we saw something we've never seen before. Owls, when they're getting ready to breed, the male owl will decorate the burrow. You'll see slides of decorated burrows. They'll bring trash, paper, torn up paper, shredded paper, cigarette butts, colored rocks, anything that's weird. You'll look, it looks like a trash pile. If you ever see that, leave it alone. The male will work hard for that. The female just thinks it's the most beautiful thing. <laughs> so I went to see if the nest was decorated, because that would tell me if he it'll help me figure out if he's attracted to make it. What I saw was six chameleons that he had caught, killed. They were white. A dead chameleon isn't green anymore. Whatever color they changed into, they're white. He had them splayed out like the rays of the sun coming out of the entrance to the burrow. Never been seen before. <laughs> Sending that up to Kelly. He says, Kelly, have you ever seen a snowball? I've never seen that. How cool is that, right? And I'm the only one in here. I'm going, nobody to show. It's like, okay. So I go back to my chair. I have my binoculars. The sun's going down. I'm watching this little guy. And now it's like, oh, man, this is weird. It's getting dark. I'm all alone. I can't see out anymore. And then I hear a whoo That's the call they use when they're trying to attract a female. And he didn't stop. Yeah, just right, 20 minutes goes by. I just kept on going. Like, all right, I got to call this. Uh, next day, she was there. It worked. She came over, saw those chameleons, and man, what a good hunter he is. And I said, sure. You know, she moved right in. So it was, that was really neat. Okay, female owls. They lay an egg every 36 hours. We're in breeding season right now. Uh, FWC says breeding season is from February 15th through July 10th. But we had baby owls in January already. That just tells you owls don't use calendars. They'll, they'll breed whenever they're ready to breed. Generally, when the temperature starts to change, you get a cold snap in like October, November. That's a sign to the owls. Hey, it's time. Maybe we should start thinking about getting back to our birth. Owls don't always stay in the burrows year-round. Some owls will stay in their burrows year-round. Others become more arboreal, going up into the trees, or under house eaves, roofs, or just some kind of weird places where the hawks can't get to. So we're in breeding season now. Female owl will lay an egg every 36 hours. So in three days, that's two eggs. They'll lay between two and 12 eggs. She'll sit on those eggs for four weeks. Once those eggs hatch, they don't all hatch at the same time because they weren't all laid at the same time. Uh, they'll hatch a day and a half apart, give or take. And then they'll stay down in the hole for two weeks till they get big enough that mom and dad thinks it's okay for them to come out. 
Once the female owl starts to lay her eggs, the male owl stops using that burrow. Very rare for the male to go down the burrow once the female starts laying eggs. He will con continue to hunt for her. He'll bring her food. When the eggs hatch, he'll bring more food. He digs a satellite burrow because he knows that burrow is going to be crowded and noisy. And that satellite burrow is called the man cave. <laughs> How fit. And once the little ones start coming out, two weeks later, they're starting to learn to fly a little bit. They're flying over to the man cave. So then mom can start hunting too. Then mom and dad are hunting, bringing extra food for all these little babies. What do owls eat? Owls are not vegetarians. They don't eat any grass. They don't eat any plants. They eat anything that's live, moving around. They're insectivores. They'll eat mammals. They'll eat small little birds. They'll even eat iguanas if, when they're hats and real little. They can eat them. Um, once they start, we've noticed they love frogs. A lot of times we'll see frog carcasses at the entrance to the burrows. And the more frog carcasses we see, the more we know, all right, these guys are real good hunters. Um, one of the other things, this is a kit that you can get online. We recommend it to uh, science classes. Come with the DVD says all that remains. And it comes with these. Guess what's inside the aluminum foil? Owl pellets. Any of you guys have cats? No fur balls? Yeah, well, owls do the same thing. Well, they can't digest, they spit up in a little pellet. So this is a great activity for the kids. This kit comes with little tweezers, little sticks to separate the owl pellets, little magnifying glasses so they can identify the bones, little magnifying cubes, and the kids just have a blast seeing what that owl ate. We had one class, I almost recreate a, a whole little frog, little baby frog. It was really, really cool. So when I'm presenting in schools, a lot of times the kids say, yeah, we did that. That was so much fun. All right. Uh, Let's talk a little bit over here. I'll move the camera over. Where are we here now? Sorry, guys, I'm over here. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right. So, Project Perch, that's who we are. We observe, protect, and nurture Florida growing owls. To observe, you can volunteer, become an owl guardian, help educate the public. Uh, protect, we create safe habitat. We use artificial burrows to give them uh, safe homes. We nurture, I already talked about uh, creating more habitat and uh, the perches. Owls eat rodents. So if you poison rodents, you poison owls. Last night we had two dead owls at the mainlands in Broward County. Two dead owls at the same time. One was an owl and one was an adult. What does that tell you? It tells you it's not natural causes. The adult and the baby that just don't happen to die, you know. So this is what what happened. You see these black boxes around restaurants, around buildings. It's where dentists they poison the the rat, they poison the mouse for no reason. Because if there's owls around, the owls eat so many rats and mice. You want owls by your restaurant. <laughs> you know, there's like nature's insecticide. Nature's, you know, they'll, they'll, a pair of nesting burrowing owls can eat up to 700 rodent pests per year. But there's still people that are using poison traps and killing owls. So if you ever see that, take it up with the owner or the management. Say, do you really have to do that? There's other traps you can use that won't kill owls. Uh, a lot of times we get calls about, oh, we have a burrowing owl, this one, and I go there and it's a screech owl. The screech owl is the smallest owl in Florida. The burrowing owl is the second smallest. The easiest way to tell them apart, see the ears on the screech owl, those ear tufts? The burrowing owl doesn't really have those, which is a good thing, because if you're going down a tunnel, 
the last thing you need are your ears scraping on the roof to that tunnel, right? You'll just have bloody ears. So the burrow and owl is designed for tunnels. The screech owl has short feather legs. The burrow and owl, see how long these guys' legs are? They chase down most of their prey. They're able to take something out in flight. They're able to swoop down or grab something out of the air. But most often, they'll run something down with their long legs. Another thing, when they're hunting, the burrowing owl, their hearing is so acute that they find more prey by sound than they do with their vision with the eyes. That's kind of interesting. All right. Um, some of the signage we use. If uh, you call FWC, they'll give you one of these free signs, the landowners. For some reason, the FWC, Ricardo, won't give me signs. He says, Paul, you have to have the landowner request a sign. And that means I have to go back out once the landowner gets a sign and I have to put the sign up for the landowner because for some reason, landowners can't figure out how to put a sign up. <laughs> <laughs> This was our old sign. We had 200 of these made up, Project Perch, and we would put this out. Protected side area closed, do not disturb. Have a little picture of the owl and some guidance for the landscapers. When we went through these 200, we spent $5,000 and we got 200 of these signs made up. And this is what we're using currently. This has a much larger owl, got yellow, it attracts attention. <coughs> Uh, again, area closed, uh, landscapers, no spraying at chemicals around the burrows at all. Line trimming only inside the perimeter. We'll put up a perimeter. People always confuse the, the rope or the wood fence. A lot of times we'll use rope and also no heavy mowers. The reason we put ropes around the burrows is because if it's a natural burrow, it can just easily be collapsed. If it's an artificial burrow, when the owl digs out behind the back of this, that can be collapsed by heavy mowers. So we rope it off. If the grass gets higher than five inches, according to the FWC, within 10 feet of a burrow, you're violating their regulations. The grass has to be low enough that the owls can scan for predators. Sometimes we'll rope off an area and the, the landowners will let the grass get too tall. The owls can't scan for predators. It's not safe. The owls abandon the burrow. Now they're homeless. And while they're looking for a new place to dig and make a new burrow, it's easy for a hawk or somebody to take it out because the landowner didn't talk to the lawn crew. All right. Um, let's do some slides. We have some good slides. So, okay, plant a burrow, grow an owl. Oh, there's an owl. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Just flew right out of that. All right. So this, the owl is Athena Canicularia floridana. Athena was the goddess of wisdom, which makes sense. Canicularia is Latin for mining. So that makes sense because the owls live underground. They dig holes, they, they mine. And Florida is just where they live. There's, I think, 22 subspecies of burrowing owl on the planet. Only two live in North America. If you Google burrowing owl, you get tons of information on the Western burrowing owl. The Florida burrowing owl is only found in Florida and some of the islands, and occasionally on a cruise ship. That's all that new story. <laughs> Uh, this is one of the old signs that we had. We had uh, four different signs, and each sign would have different information about it. Uh, and here's an owl. They love her sign, so they just used it as a perch. We can go on. This was that orange book. This is the size of an owl egg, quarter size. And the DDT is still present in our owls, may have been the shell. It sends up to eight or ten, maybe late. Scientifically, it says two to twelve. And this, see, Brian Neely, these were his owls, and you'll never see these pictures anywhere else. Dr. Neely allowed us to share this with you guys. This is uh, what they look like when they hatch. 
Lavaz. This is uh, before they dry out. Day one. And that's dried out on day one. How cute is that? Huh? Is that amazing? You guys said, oh, we should have done this before. We had this in the fall all the time. We had this. <laughs> all right, let's go on. And this is how long they are. You see this about two, look, about two inches, right? Okay. <laughs> now, science has said they kind of like birds, saying the birds came from the dinosaurs. You've all heard that, right? Yeah. It's not look a little like a dinosaur. Yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe, maybe that's true. Okay. They said now he really looks kind of like the, the flying dinosaur, or that, <laughs> pterosaur, or whatever. Okay. Day nine. Yeah. And these were all shot inside the the burrows. This isn't, so the, the lighting's kind of freaky. Okay. Day 12. Look at those eyes. And the eyes aren't really that color. That's just because of the lighting when they're this age. If they were outside the burrow with regular lighting, they would have the yellow eye. Day 12 and moving on. And we're jumping down to day 25. That's good. And he's uh, pretty attentive now. At this point, he's out of coming out of the burrow. When they come out of the burrow, they have to learn mouse school. They have to learn how to hunt. They have to learn how to tear apart their prey, and so they can eat it. And they also have to do flight school. And the rehab centers that take care of owls, they make sure before any owls release that they're able to do. Uh, mouse school and flight school before we release now back into the wild. Sometimes we have owls that are not releasable, and uh, at that point, we just recently had one owl we took to a Sawgrass Nature Center uh, because of a wing injury. It would never be able to fly properly again. So South, uh, the Sawgrass Nature Center had an ambassador owl, Spike, who'd been living alone for like five years. Now Spike has a friend. And this is 93. This is about full grown. What a beautiful bird. All right, let's move on. Sometimes, because a loss of habitat, the owls end up in really bad spots. And you'll see owls in places. And this is uh, one of the owls, not in a very good spot. Next one. See the owl here? Oh, that's the spring spring tree water plant, the city of Sunrise. His burrow is right outside that building. His mates in the burrow, his young are in the burrow, and he's hiding out. There's no roof to that building, so he flies in there to hide from the hawks, and then he comes back out to hunt and feed his family. Next. This was at a school, and again, it's like, hey, it's just going off the floors. <laughs> we get calls, hey, this crazy owl is here, what do we do? They say, Don't do anything, just let him be. He'll go out you know, when he's ready to go. Next. This was my favorite, one of my favorites. He says, man, look at me. <laughs> X Games, I can do this. <laughs> and now he's on one leg. Why do the flamingos stand on one leg? I, I don't know. I was, one day somebody oh. asked, I don't know. If you don't ask, you don't learn anything. Right? Okay. They, they, they think it's one of two things. One is a resting leg, and the other one is a, a temperature control. They'll bring one up to the body, and, and it'll help with blood flow and warm the blood. They're not sure which is right. Maybe a combination of two, or maybe none of them. Who knows? Okay, next. Here's one on somebody's patio. Yeah, just lounging around. Lounging around. Okay, I won't say that one again. That was bad. <laughs> All right, under the eaves above the front door, private home. Silas's science project. They actually, this uh, Silas put artificial burrows at his house, and he had owls moving. Yep. Yeah. 
golf courses. This is uh, Hillcrest Golf Course. This is unbelievable. Uh, I, I had a rehab valve that needed a, to be <coughs> released, and the location was uh, we couldn't find his birth. And this is right next to Ninninger's. It's a veteran uh, VA hospital home, and they had some owls living there. So I asked the the manager at uh, the VA if I could put an artificial burrow to release the owl. It's a sugar farm. So I made arrangements, and I brought the burrow, and I set it down. I put my shovel in the ground, and I went in to let them know I'm here. And I come out, and I see the owl <laughs> on my shovel and wants to know what's taking so long. He's trying to get his new home. It's like, man, sometimes when I think of burrow, I get a call before I even get home. Oh, they're already at the burrow. That's incredible. Okay, next. Aww. How cool is that? <laughs> that is that is very neat. How are we doing on time? Six Okay. <laughs> next. This is them practicing flying skills. They'll first start flapping their wings, get a little air under, and they're not really too sure. It takes them a week or two to really master it. It's funny you see them learning. And next. This poor little guy was at a park in Cooper City. He was learning to fly, and he flew into a trash can at this park. And mom and dad couldn't get him out, and he couldn't get out. So luckily, uh, I've done a presentation I do every year for the Eco Patrol at Griffin Elementary. Uh, Jackie Sanchez, she runs the Eco Patrol for that school, and her kids had heard the talk about burrowing owls and knew that, hey, that we, we have to do something. So told his parents that, hey, you have to get a hold of Miss Fisher or Miss Sanchez. And Miss Sanchez called me, and I just left the restaurant. My wife and I drove right over there. I gloved up. I took the little baby owl out. I put him down in the burrow with mom and daddy owl, happy, and everybody was, everything was good. But that kid saved the bird's life because the kid knew what to do. So that's pretty cool. All right, next. Two sleepy-headed youngsters from the sidewalk were old enough to walk and cry. Yeah, eyes are shut. The young, for the first year, have the white chest. They'll grow to the same size as mom and dad, like within a month. So if you're looking with binoculars, you can't tell which is mom and dad, which is the baby, unless you can see the chest. After a year, they'll molt those white feathers, and then they'll get that barred pattern. So that they'll uh, be more camouflaged. Here you can see mom is the one in the middle, right? Because yeah. the other ones all have the, the white chest. This is a decorated burrow. You see actually some pellets. And another thing that's there that you may not recognize is uh, feces. Owls are great farmers. They will hunt poop, and they'll bring poop to the burrow. And poop does two things. One is it attracts insects, and what do owls eat? Insects. They're farmers. <laughs> the other thing is when they're using it for decorations, all of this litter, when mama's getting ready to begin laying, goes down into the tunnel and becomes padding for the nest. As this breaks down, it creates heat and helps to incubate the eggs. There's a really decorated burrow. That's a lot of trash. <laughs> yeah, Daddy Al's been working hard. More decorated burrows. Mama says, wow, look how gorgeous. I'm moving on up. Actually, she's moving down. Okay, next. See the owls? It's yeah. parallaxing. Why do birds do why do these birds do that? 
It's cute when the babies do that. <laughs> Owl's eyes are fixed in their in their sockets. And if we put her finger out and, and keep her head still, our eyes will move back and forth following your finger, no problem. Well, the owls have to turn their heads. So a good example is with our hearing. We have stereo hearing. You, you hear a sound, and the sound waves hit one eardrum split second before it hits the other eardrum. Your brain can determine one it hit first. So you can, oh, the direction it came this way. Well, eyes you get depth the same way. Lights hitting one spot, lights hitting the other spot. And since we can move our eyes around, we can get better depth perception without having to turn our heads. But these owls turn their heads to try to figure out how far that thing is away from them. Next. This is, this is a cute one. Remember I just mentioned when the babies are paralyzing? How funny is that? Okay, and a little more. It's like, oh, turn your head 360. Yeah, but look at this direction. Okay. This was one I found. This bird was in somebody's little backyard, and I couldn't find the bird. Up. What do I do? I said, Just leave it alone. I'm sure mom and dad's around somewhere. I told the homeowner, You got my number. Uh, check tomorrow morning. If it's still there, then let me know. And uh, it, it was gone. It had gotten back home. Mom and Dad came back. All right. Oh <laughs> so this is. This is like. Uh, 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 <clears throat> and then he spit it up. Here it is, right there. And then he spits it out. There's that alpha that we talked about. Yeah. Did I do that? <laughs> Okay. We have some really good slides. I'm impressed yeah. every time I see this. Yeah. You'll never see this anywhere else. Okay. And there's some more out now. Let's close up. This is our extremely organized shop. <laughs> yeah. And there's my brother. No, it's actually. <laughs> <laughs> Drilling holes for the plastic ties. Okay, yeah. There's actually a video on this. This was from the old Project Perch Days before we had a volunteer Emmy Award winning videographer. If you go to our website, projectperch.org, really good videos. This guy is amazing. He even made me look. Okay. And we have a workshop on making the burrows. We go into a lot of details. Okay, next. Cutting out the floor of the pipes. And we're jigsaw, we're just uh, cutting the boxes. There's one uh, being sunk in the ground. And how deep the hole here? The hole goes down deep enough to where we have six inches of dirt on top of the green lid. This is 10 inches tall, six inches of dirt, so it's 16 inches deep. And then the pipe angles up right to ground level. The top of the pipe is ground level, so nothing sticks above the ground. This is an excavated burrow. We had a permit to uh, remove. We put in mitigation burrows uh, at least a week before we execute the permit. Uh, and then we put our cameras down. We have special scopes that go down the tunnels to make sure that before we excavate, there's no eggs or flightless young. And then we dig it out a little bit at a time annually, and then we can backfill it, and the kids can have the ball fields, or construction can continue. Pardon me? When it rains? Well, yes, sometimes. When we put in the, that, the artificial burrows, we always do it on high ground. Sometimes owls will dig in low ground and they do flood. But in Florida, we have two seasons. We don't have four seasons. We have the rainy season and the dry season. The owls breed in dry season so that by the time we start getting our summer rains, the baby owls will have already learn to fly. And they'll be able to go up to the trees. And most of their burrows, after it floods, the water will recede 
and the burrow will stay intact. And this is a shot of trapping owls at Fort Lauderdale Airport. The guy in the green shirt, Matt Natale, he's the airport biologist. He's still there today. I talked to him this last week. He actually uh, has some more owls now. They went for four years without any owls at the airport. Next. Any of you uh, Valley Harbor people recognize this woman? That's Dr. Schneider, Renata. Yeah, she was very active in the program. And the person on the left over here, that's our founder, Kelly Hefferman. And this, that was a uh, new at uh, South Florida Wildlife Center. And there's a bird getting banded, getting checked out. Bird says, release me already. What's the silly green thingy on my ankle? <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, one of the 10 foot pelican cages that we brought the birds off into. Each cage had two artificial burrows in the bottom. And we also sunk a third burrow outside the cave, which we call the Houdini burrow. <laughs> because if an owl escaped, and couldn't get back into the cage, we wanted to have a safe place for it to go to. So we put the third burrow for the magician owls. And we had a pair of owls, P00 and P11, who weren't getting along. And instead of waiting the two week period, uh, I'd go in in the morning and I'd see P00 in the corner, P11 wasn't letting it feed. And we, we put a trail cam in and watched. And so we had to separate the two. We took P00, put it in the Houdini burrow, and instead of flying away, stood there, stayed there overnight. I came back the next morning, fully expecting that bird to be gone. He was there, and he was looking at P11 in the cage, and going, I'm pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> And this is after we removed the cages. We moved uh, 15 owls, and when we took the cages away, five owls stayed, 10 owls flew away. Now the 10 owls that flew away, three flew back to the airport. <laughs> so we trapped them again, and we brought them back, and we put them in the cages for longer. And then they eventually stayed. Two that flew away <coughs> came back and made it and had babies at the ridge. So oh, that's yeah. cool. So there was only yeah. five out of the 15 that we don't know what happened, but those five were, they were good hunters, and there's lots of area around that park. So we're assuming that they made it to that they, they're okay somewhere. And the next slide. When observing burrowed owls, please look for existing leg bands. That's always good. And use your binoculars when you view owls. This is the major problem, the yeah. biggest threat to the owls. Female iguanas bury their eggs. They'll lay 60 eggs at a time. They can have two clutches a year. And when mama owl is sitting on her eggs, iguana doesn't have to dig. Last year, I had four pairs of owls at this colony sitting on nest. I come back in one night, three of those four burrows were filled in by iguanas. No, they didn't eat the eggs. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah, the female iguana laid 60 eggs and then filled in the burrow. So now the owl eggs are, yeah, they're done. Yeah. So luckily, here, here's the bright side. FWC became aware. I made them aware. Finally, I got their attention, and. The lead invasive person, invasive species person for the Florida Fish and Wildlife lives in Sunrise. Kelly Gestrin. He's my good friend now. <laughs> he had a couple of his biologists and him visit some owl sites where there's iguana problems. And FWC has air rifles. And humanely euthanizing iguanas where they're interfering with owl breeding. So, and he loaned me extra traps. You know, I retired. I never signed up to kill anything. 
But when I lose all the Alvaro's, it's like humane. Um, I went to two workshops that the FWC had. I'm iguanas. Uh, I do everything exactly perfect, and you know, it's the worst part of my volunteer gig is is that. Um, but it's a necessary it's necessary. necessary evil. It's, it's all over. It's not exactly, black spiny tail. They're the most vicious ones. They will actually bite you. Yeah, the next slide. These are 60 eggs that I we took out of an Alvaro. Nicole, remember this? Mm -hmm. Nicole's one of our volunteers here. You were you dug these out, right? That was you. Yeah. So we, we lined them all up, five, 12 rows, 60. That's incredible. I used to tell people that iguanas laid 40 eggs until I saw the one laid 60. What a good looking couple, huh? <laughs> and there's one if we if you plant a burrow you grow it out how about that huh yeah. mom with a little baby yeah it doesn't get any cuter than that so cuter than that would be a basket of kittens <laughs> <laughs> you can use that I still <laughs> <laughs> Enough already. Thanks to who? All right. Oh. Questions, anybody? To where the Goodyear blimp is, they're building uh, new hangars, and there's Alvaro that needed to be removed, so we pulled a permit. And right next to that is Sand and Spurs. So we did the mitigation burrows in the equestrian part at Sand and Spurs, and then the Alvaro was in an abandoned gopher tortoise burrow, and this owl, it was a biggest burrow I've ever seen. I'm, I'm excavating, you know, I put the camera down and now I'm excavating and I got rid of my little shovel that I normally do for the little Alvaro. Got the big shovel and now I'm down like to my knees and I'm digging deeper. It was huge. I will have like a three-story mansion. So yes. Yeah, that uh, happens. Uh, quite, yes. Yeah, um, so do they not use the same sites every year? Like they change Oh, they will use the same sites. Yes. Uh huh. If they have success breeding in a certain location, they'll use that over and over. As a matter of fact, when the owls dig the burrow, it creates a mound in front because that dirt has to go somewhere. It makes a mound. And if they use it every year, the female digs again before she lays, so that mound gets bigger. So you can get a good idea by the size of the mound how old the burrow is and how deep, how long it is. So those ones are like at schools and stuff like that. They generally don't come back because sometimes some schools they, they will. They Driftwood Middle. We had the burrowing out camp at Driftwood Middle. We were able to put in artificial burrows in a section of the school, and they all moved into them. And it was a chain link fence. They had this whole area to themselves. They had the burrowing out camp. If you uh, Google burrowing out camp, um, you'll get the footage on that. The camera's no longer at the school. We're in the process of changing the location of the camera to that spring tree water plant where you saw the owl inside the building. That burrow right outside, the water plant is gated. So security, they can't be vandalized. The owls have been there a long time. We're gonna have a new owl cam there. Um, the, the viewership on that has just gone to the next level. So that's pretty neat. Now we're up to I forget how the levels work, but you get so many clicks, you, you move it. So, like, we're at the top now. Uh, that. Yeah. Um, how long do they live normally? Up to eight years is a long time. Um, many don't make the first year. But if they get through that first year, they can breed after one year. And um, in captivity, they can live a little bit longer. Uh, so they're not very long, long lives at all. You say you know, build a burrow, grow an owner. 
you have to be someplace where they are. They, that's true. Okay. If, so, if you if you put a borough in Georgia, you won't get a Florida. Well, no, I, I put a <laughs> borough in Aventura. Wow. Are they going to find it? Uh, we suggest that you don't put boroughs in areas that aren't wide open and doesn't have sufficient foraging habitat for the owls. So if you do have a, a location that's suitable for the owls, then you can put in an artificial burrow. And if you sand it well and keep it clear, it will attract an owl to a place that hasn't had owls within two, three, four, five miles. We actually had an owl uh, in Miami it flew into a building, glass window. Birds sometimes fly into glass. And this bird, unfortunately, it died, but it was banded. And the bird was from Naples. We never knew that burrowing owls would travel across airways, flew across planes. So, so golf courses aren't good primarily because they cut the grass? No, golf courses are great. We want to keep the grass trimmed so that the owls can stand for predator. If the grass gets too tall, then the owls can be forced to abandon their burrows. Right. Any other questions? Yes. So maybe back off the golf course question. Are you not um, worried about like you know people or like balls or, or anything like that? Like it's a suitable location for burrowing owls? Yes, absolutely. These owls, because they were losing so much habitat, they are becoming uh, urbanized. You know the the barn owl didn't always live in barns, <laughs> right? Think about it. Before the people moved in here and, and built the barn, what did the barn owls live on? Tree. Yeah, exactly. So now the barn owl is a barn owl because they learned to adapt. These guys are very adaptable. We see burrows underneath slides and playgrounds where the kids are running around all the time playing. And uh, you know, we have to go and close down the slide, but... The owl wouldn't care. <laughs> the owl's there. And one thing the owls know is that when people are around, the hawks aren't going to come get them. Um, These guys are so smart. I tell you, they're smarter than I am. And that's not difficult, but they, you know, it's like they're smart. They figured it out. Uh huh. Any other questions? Yes. Good question. How long to build a burrow? They get started overnight, and uh, they'll have it like this far in one night. And then the next night, they can finish it. And they do it together? Uh, uh, one at a time. One at a time. At a time. Yeah. yeah, generally, if, if it's a, a young male who hasn't mated yet looking for a mate, he does it all by himself, and he'll decorate, and he'll call. If he's had a mate they successfully bred previously, then she'll come back and he'll dig together, they'll dig a nest burrow, or they'll use the one from prior year if it's still okay. And generally they're still okay. She'll just go in and she'll dig out a little more and make it, you know, spring cleaning. And that's the coolest thing. If you ever see these owls digging, you walk it along and you see earth flying up out of the ground like this high. <laughs> First time I saw that, it freaked me out. Like, what in the world? <laughs> God, it's a volcano. <laughs> so what are they using, the wings or the legs? To get Both. Oh. Both. Yeah. And we think one of our volunteers hypothesized, it's not proven, that they pack the top of the tunnel, that they do saliva. So to wet it, and then they pack it with the round head. We don't know. They just <clears throat> sometimes you just make stuff up, right? So Chris made that up. I, said, I don't know if it's not true or if it is true. It kind of makes sense. It's a theory. Now, from this, now they dig another tunnel that goes up to the ground. No, no, one way in, one way out. They'll just extend it and. Uh, the tunnel very seldom. They, they won't go in a straight line. They like to get a bend right away because light goes in a straight line. When we put in our artificial burrows, we'll always face it in a northern direction, northeast, northwest. We don't want the sun shining directly into the burrow. So when the owls make their natural burrow, 
they always get it back. Nicole found a burrow that she was excavating at Shamana Madonna, and it actually made a complete circle. Yeah, we've never seen that. That was just this past year, right? This recently. So it's like, you never know what you're going to find when you do this. It's, it's really cool. Are, are snakes a threat to them going down? Uh, big snakes, they'll avoid. Uh, uh, pythons, yeah, we'll get them. Uh, generally, though, they're quick. They'll, they'll, they have wings. They'll fly away. I mean, in the, the snakes go into the pearls. Uh, they, they could. They could. Pythons the could do that. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then if that were to happen, we wouldn't know. Yeah. Because, you know, we, the only time we put our cameras down, the borough, it's illegal to scope a borough without a permit. And the only time we pull a permit is if we have to remove the borough. Mm -hmm. Dr. Mealy is, doesn't like scoping at all. He says it's better just to, once you have the permit, just start excavating. But FWC says you should scope if you're not sh sure if there's eggs or flight this young. But generally, depending on the time of year and if you've seen that they have uh, babies already and the babies have fled, you know there's no more eggs down there that are alive. You know that their breeding is done, so you don't have to you know, bother scoping. Because the scope, if you the, get the timing wrong, the scope could damage uh, an egg or a, or a fresh, you know, freshly hatched bird. Yeah. More questions? No? Well, you have a great audience. Thank you. To support Project Perch, you can go to projectperch.org and there's donate buttons. So you can do it with cash. That's the biggest help. I'm going to take a picture of his favorite. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you.